Good morning, saints of God. Good morning. Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you. It's still a blessing to look out and see people's faces, smiling faces, mask on, mask off. It's good to see your face. Uh, all January birthdays, happy birthday from Great Little Baptist Church. Every Sunday, 10 a.m. Sunday school, 11 a.m. Sunday worship. Sunday, January the 9th, 2022, installation of 2022 Officers, please wear black if you have it. Everybody got black. There is also a church anniversary committee meeting following morning service next Sunday, January the 9th. Uh, GLBC, please be sure to fill out another membership update form and give it to the usher or the church clerk. If we want to make sure that we have updated information on all members here at GLBC, all members are asked to pledge to give $10 per month above your tithes for the entire year. Now, ways to give. <laughs> Mail, the thir 330 Chestnut Street, Lexington, Kentucky, 4508. PayPal, GLBC Finance Team at gmail.com. And cash app, dollar sign, 330, Greater Liberty, BC. Thank you. These are our announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Happy 2022 to everyone. Happy 2022. On behalf of our pastor, Elder Marcus Underwood, and the members of Greater Liberty Missionary Baptist Church, we thank you for choosing Greater Liberty as your place of worship this morning. Please feel free to come back to worship again at 330 Chestnut Street, where the doors are always open. Again, thank you. Amen. <laughs>
you, Heavenly Father. Yes, From the pastor to the doorkeeper, yes, Heavenly Father. All the way, and everybody in the yes, We thank you, dear God. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. The Christian standard says it this way, Lord, remember what has happened to us. Look and see our disgrace. Lord, bring us back to yourself so we may return. 
renew our days mm -hmm. as in former times. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Lord, remember. Lord, turn. And Lord, renew. Yeah. All right, all right. Lord, remember. Yes, sir. Lord, turn. Preach that. Preach that. And Lord, renew. Yeah. All right. Beloved, I declare, I declare this morning with all sincerity. We are in bad shape. Yeah. And you know. What you see on the surface don't tell me what you're going through on the inside. You can have an automobile that on the outside the paint still look good. No dents, no scratches in the body. But get in the inside of it and yeah. put the key in and yeah. turn it yeah. and nothing happens. Yeah. It doesn't tell me what the condition is of the inner parts. What you've been through. Where you've been. I can tell you this morning that our nation, our government, our society, our, our community, our church is in bad shape. It may look on the outside that everything is kosher. I see you all today. Most of you look good. <laughs> if you bet I'm talking about you, that's between you and yourself. <laughs> But that doesn't tell me what you've been through this year. It doesn't tell me what you've had to endure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Lord, I know that the amount of suffering and hurt and pain and confusion and yeah, yeah, yeah. disappointment and loss that you have endured in this season. It has been difficult to bear. I asked, I asked Deacon Greg if he would read that text. Thank God that the Lord laid it on his heart to call and ask me if I had a scripture that specifically I wanted read. Because two years ago, when I introduced the theme for 2019, is that right? Was it 2020? The theme was Shake It Up. And it was that very text that he just read. And right after that came the pandemic. And if you ain't noticed, the Lord been shaking the house ever since. The Lord been shaking the house ever since. And I'm not just talking about greater liberty. I am talking about the household of faith. He's been turning things Upside down. And make no mistake about it. I don't care what some other so-called Jack Nig preacher done told you. Preach, God's hand is all over this. If you think Satan has this kind of power and control, you are giving Satan way too much credit. 
and giving them way too much credit. Satan does not have the power to shake up nations in every corner of the globe at the same time. Only God has that kind of authority and that kind of power. I say that to me that this season that we've been in, beloved, I don't need you to attribute it to anything else but the hand of God. Are you all hearing me this morning? Don't attribute it to anything else other than the hand of Jehovah. He is God. He is king. He is alpha. He is omega. He rules. He super rules. He does what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, with who he wants, and to whom he wants. And you know what? He doesn't ask for permission. We sum that up in one word. God is sovereign. God is sovereign. We just finished studying the book of Lamentations. I hope most of y'all followed me through that series. But we just finished the book of Lamentations. And what we dealt with in that text was how God brought judgment and chastisement on his own church. Is that what we dealt with? He brought chastisement on his own church. The suffering that they had to deal with was by the one they called their God. It was by his own decree. Beloved, in this season that we're in, because, you know, I'm crazy enough to believe that God is intentional in all things. And I'm crazy enough to believe, you know, that one verse that everybody knows and loves and wants to quote, Romans 8 and 28, that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. I'm crazy enough to believe that. And then I'm crazy enough to believe two verses down from that, where he said he is conforming us to the image of his son. I say that to say this. There are some things that God is just not going to tolerate from his church. There's some things God just ain't going to tolerate. I know he's a loving God. He's a forgiving God. We stand in the grace and the mercy of God. But keep getting out of line and see if God don't show up. I ain't talking about the heathen. I ain't talking about the unbeliever. I ain't talking about the vagabond. I ain't talking about the one who speaks against God. I'm talking about the ones to your left, to your right. Behind you, in front of you, standing in pulpits with powers who are singing songs of Zion this morning, God will visit you. That's who I'm talking to. I, I don't know about y'all. Let me bring it home, maybe make it a little easier for you to understand. But I, 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 I care about the little children. But let the Underwoods get out of order. It's going to be a different response. When I see your kids acting up, if they're around me, I'm going to say, now, boy, you know you need to do better than that. But if it's mine, come on. You jacked up around the collar. You just might get smacked around a little bit. Some things taken away from you. Okay, what I'm saying is, this season was about God's church. Yes, 
about God's church. You think it bothers God that the heathens act the way they act? Huh? I mean, really think about it. You think that bothers God? They don't belong to him. Do you blame a dog for acting like a dog? Do you blame a hog for wilding in the mud right after you gave him a bat? Then why do you blame man, heathens, for acting like he? But there's a problem when it's God's people. And you can't distinguish God's people from the heathens. That's a problem. And that's why Israel went into captivity to Babylon for 70 years. And in getting them there, they had to go through pure hell. Starvation. Murder. Rape. Mothers eating their own young. The temple torn down. Their ceremonial worship and law that they hung the graces of God as the people of God coming together, all of that gold, the holy city of Jerusalem burned to ashes. Nowhere to turn, taken and exiled out of their own land. Forced to even pay for water from their own land. It was worse. Jeremiah says, they were worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, and the question is, why would God do his own people like that? Wow. He expects more out of us. There's some things that God just ain't going to tolerate. God is a God of order. Does the sun come up every morning? Hallelujah. I see it. Does the moon shine at night? I see it. After the rain, the flowers bloom. God is a God of order. Yes, and God is not going to stand for his church being out of war. And he's not going to stand for no gods to be, no other gods to be put before him. Y'all got a problem with I'm your father. I'm God. I'm Elohim. I'm Jehovah. I'm the great I am. How in the world are you giving credit to some other God? How are you looking to other gods? And you might say, well, I don't serve other gods. Are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? Because one might argue where you spend your time, your talent, your resources, and your gifts, that just might be your God. God ain't going to tolerate some stuff. So God came to visit them. And Jeremiah, who is known as the weeping prophet, he came and he lamented in this book. But he cried out because he wanted the church to cry out too. He wanted the church to see why God had them going through what they were going through in hopes that they would turn back to God. Right. That's what it was about. He wanted them to see it. And he didn't want them to blame Nebuchadnezzar. He didn't want them to blame the Chaldeans. He wanted them to see that it was the hand of God the whole time. Yeah. And that the only, if they were going to blame anybody, the only person they could blame was themselves. That's right. Amen. That's right, Amen. 
Preach It was themselves. What am I saying, church? I'm saying that God is keeping his promise to us. He said that I'm going to make you look like Jesus. He did say he's doing what? He is preparing him a bride that is without spot or wrinkle, fit for his son who is holy. Holy, holy. It's a lot of ironing out he got to do to get her ready for his son. So if God has to take us through seasons like this, by any means necessary, yeah. 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 so be it. Yeah. So be it. And this has been a long season too. Yeah. And it's been rough. Yeah. And it has touched every household. Yeah. 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 Every household has been touched. Yeah. And I don't want y'all to get it twisted. I ain't just talking about no pandemic. We bury the folk every day and it ain't because they died from COVID. God is intentional. So Jeremiah here, after he has cried throughout the whole book, he gets to chapter 5. And he's praying and he says, remember, remember, Lord, remember us. I come to serve somebody notice today. God has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. The Lord knows who you are. He knows every hair on your head. Yes, he knows what you had to deal with this, this past year. Yes, he knows what you went through this past year, this past season. He knows what you're dealing with right yes, now. God. And see, and I, I, I say that not to insult you. To insult your knowledge that you know, God is omniscient and of course he knows. But I say that to remind you because if you're anything like me, sometimes you can get caught up in what you are going through and what you are dealing with to where you just might think for a moment, where is God? The thought might creep up in your mind. Why would God let me go through something like this? Where is the hand of God? Where is the promise of God? Has my God forsaken me? Has he taken his hand off of me? I've been through some seasons where I've questioned God. I'm human. And I don't understand everything God does. Why he does it. And everything ain't for me to understand. But in my limited self, sometimes I look around and I have trouble seeing God. Yes, sir. 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 Maybe you ain't been there. But when you look around, you do a 360, you look all the way around. And all you see is this person hurt. That person hurt. This person suffering. This household suffering. Yeah. This family sick. These folk killing folk over here. 
They talking about people over here. Slaying each other in streets over there. It's hard when I look around to see the hand of Jehovah. So sometimes I might question where is God? Jeremiah says, Lord, remember us. Do not forsake us. And I just want to serve somebody notice that God has not forgotten. As a matter of fact, he's been right there by your side the entire time. You need evidence that he was there? Pinch yourself. The fact that you're still here is evidence that God's hand was still on you the entire time. The fact that you ain't killed yourself the fact that you ain't steeped in depression. The fact that you ain't lost your mind. Is evidence that God has been with you the whole time. So therefore, Jeremiah says, Lord, remember us. It kind of makes me feel like Jeremiah knows a little bit about this God. And one thing Jeremiah could bank on is that he is not a man that he should lie. And if God promised never to leave, No forsake me. Then that's a promise that you can hang on to. God is not slack concerning his promises but towards his people. God will not forget what he promised Abraham when he told him if you can count the sand of the sea, yeah. so shall thy seed be. Yeah. When he told him if you can count the stars in the sky, yeah. so shall thy seed be. Yeah. When he promised David there will always be yeah. Uh, yeah. one sitting on the throne. Yeah. If God promised it, that settles it. Yeah. Beloved, you ought to know if God set you apart for himself to be his peculiar people, his called out, sanctified ones, I need you to know that he will not leave you to yourself. No matter how hot it might get in the fire, there will be some help in the fire. There will be someone, he'll be right there with you. I don't care how sick the disease might make you feel. There will always be a bomb in Gilead. I don't care how dark it might seem. There is a light that will shine through the darkness. He has never left your side. No, never, never. But he's been walking with you. Yes. And he's been talking with you. Yes. And he's been sending folk. Yes. Reminding you of stuff. Yes. 
that you are still in his own. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my. He's been doing that just because he's true to himself. And what we may mistaken to be trouble, God intends to be for our good. Because even though Israel was in pure hell, oh yeah, they was in bad shape. The good thing was, God had a purpose for chastening them. God had a purpose for whooping them. God always has a purpose for your pain. He always has a purpose for your trouble, for your periods and your seasons of confusion and of loss. He always has a purpose for it, and it's always for your good. But I got to remind people all the time about the good that Paul is talking about. I don't want you to think that that means a new car. I don't want you to think that that means a new house or a new job or more money in your bank account or everybody's going to like you and everybody's going to love you. And that's not what that means. The good that he's talking about is the the conforming of you to look like the image of Jesus. See, I'm a little rough around the edge. So every now and then, he's got to put me in the fire. So when he pulls me out and he looks at the reflection, it ain't distorted. But that he can easily make out the face of his son. So God is intentional. So he says, remember us. So in God remembering us, he then he gets down to verse 21. And he says in this verse 21, Lord, turn us. What does that mean? Not turn us back to our own land. But Lord, turn us back to you. One thing that they realized is they couldn't turn themselves. Church of God, I need us to understand that if we're going to get this thing, Back on track. It's got to be by the hand of the living God. If we are to course correct, if we are to reorient the course that we're currently on, if we are to get the pulpit back in order, if we are to get the choir back in order, if we are to get the deacon board back in order, yeah, yeah, yeah. if we are to get the family yeah. back in order, yeah. it's going to take a move of God. Yeah. It's going to take the hand of Jehovah yeah. to turn us yeah. back towards him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm reminded of a little passage that was told to Solomon after they had resurrected the temple. And the passage said, and my people who are called by my name. If they could get over, I mean, humble themselves. But if they could get over some egos. If they could leave the Me Too movement to the outside world. If they could get over their own selfish game. If 
they can get over what they see with their own eyes and humble themselves and fall on their faces and pray. He said, then, then, will I hear from heaven. Then, will I heal the land. Then, will I be the God. If we can just change how we think about some stuff. If we can just change and get away from trying to make the world, the, the church, conform to the world. And go back to the old days. But we press on the world to conform to the church. Where the church influenced the world. Instead of the church being influenced by the world instead of the world in the church mingling so much together you don't know where the line starts and where it ends you don't know who's on the Lord's side you don't know who's on Satan's side you can't tell by what they got on by how they talk by how
The Bible said renew. Yeah. And they said as in days of old. Yeah. What does that mean? Yes, sir. It means that they said we wanted to be like yeah. what it used to be. Yeah. We want the peace back. Yeah. We want the love back. Yeah. We want the glory back. Yeah. But you know what? Come on, Even though we want it like the old day, yeah. God's going to do yeah. a brand new thing. Yeah.
And then once I get in there, they don't tell me I got to do all this to keep Jesus. Yeah. What they tell me is Jesus is keeping me. Something's got to be different. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the church has the black stain it has. Yeah. Because we keep telling people to live up to something the church itself can't do. Yeah. Telling them this is the way of salvation. The devil is a liar. We tell them at the same time, it's all about Jesus. Jesus, the grace of God, and through Jesus Christ dying on the cross. But then once you come in, now you gotta do this, you gotta do this, don't you go there no more. Don't you go to quit drinking that and all this like that. You need that to stay safe. But if the Lord saved you while you was in all of that. You think because you don't stop, you're going to throw your way? Come on, Pastor. Oh. My God, my if you're in a church that tell you that, get you a new church. Yeah. Yeah. If you got a pastor that be telling you that, find you a new pastor. Yeah. Yeah. But who you listen to is a hiring. The Lord remembers. The Lord will turn. And the Lord will renew. He has not forgotten us. He has not left us. And he will turn us back to him. And when he does, he will restore. And we're going to be better. Because what we read earlier, the latter house will be greater than the former. Does anybody believe that today? Do you believe God can? Quit putting your faith in the past. Trust in God. Trust in God. Pray God keep your past. Don't put your faith in him. He's a man just like you are. And you know what? He's going to get He's going to make mistakes. Times he's going to get it wrong. It's times where he's going to disappoint you. That's why you don't put faith in man. But we say the man will what? Let you down. But there is one who has never failed me yet. And his name is Jesus. I, I, I can tell you every time, every time I need it, every time I've called on him, he showed up. He came to see about me. Every, every, every time. I can't think of one time. But the Lord didn't show up on my yeah, behalf. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Not one time. Our oh, God is great. And he is greatly to be praised. <laughs> Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a choir singer. Oh, yeah. There might be one. You may not. You don't know the Lord. You're part of your sins. But today you just heard some good stuff. You heard something that made your soul happy. You heard something that where you didn't have no hope. Now you have some hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the power of glory. So if the Lord has pierced your heart today, come to Jesus.
told me this. It was important to her that her children yes, sir. get fed the word of God. Yeah. Children to go to a place where they can be active yeah. and get the truth of God. Amen. Amen. And I thank God that He saw fit. Thank you, God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That He saw fit to graft her in yeah. to this body yeah. and unite her. Amen. And get her in the yes, sir. Thank you, God. So yes. My sister, I say again, welcome. Well, With yes, all heart and sincerity. Welcome. welcome. So where the peace of the Lord yes, is going on. Yes, so we're going to get some information from you. And then we're going to get you set up with our new members class. And then we will fellowship you in yes, with all rights and privileges. Yes, sir. As a yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have Brother Jane wishes to come back home. You come to be restored, or did you actually move your letter? No, I didn't move it. You come to be restored. All right. All right. God bless you, man. You've been coming back for a minute now. And then you blessed us with that song. What you think? I sang it out of I didn't, I didn't know you were going to have a voice like that. Woo! I've been saying. The folk that told me. And then you came and told me. So I know, you know, I know Mitchell's going to get you. I ain't even worried about that. <laughs> I ain't even worried about that. But brother, welcome home. Yes, sir. Welcome back home. Yes, sir. And you are well. You see the performance with you and for you. And where you can be free. To exercising your gifts yes, for kingdom building. Yes. Amen. Amen. God bless you, man. Welcome back home. God bless you. Amen. 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 Let us prepare to go to the Lord's table. Sister Houston, it's good to see you, baby. Look at the beautiful as you want to Twenty twenty two gonna be different. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Lord's gonna do something. Amen. I know because I'm getting anxious. <laughs> you hear me? I'm getting anxious. Impatient. So I'm almost like, Lord, you either give me patience or I need you to hurry up. Yeah. Do what you want to do. But I'm trusting God. We got to learn to trust God. We got to learn to trust Him.
you sir, that you will put on the glove if you wish to partake of the natural elements. We do also have the pre-packaged, for those of you who would prefer to have the pre-packaged elements, we do have that as well. That is your preference. Beloved, as we prepare our hearts and our minds to come to the Lord's table, in covenant relationship with our great King. For what a great work that was wrought on our behalf on Calvary's cross. Beloved, I don't know about you, but I thank God so much for, for Jesus. I thank God for Jesus. There was C.S. Spurgeon that said that the chord at Calvary was the greatest sound in the entire symphony of the gospel. There is no salvation if you don't come through Calvary. There is no redemption. There is no remission of sin if you don't come by the cross. If Christ didn't take your stead, then you're still lost. So we come together in remembrance of him as his covenant people to remember the great work that was done. I'm going to ask Elder Young that he will come and bless the table for us on this day.
desire to be served. Be served. I'm not sure no one was overlooked. Get the finance room, you all the good, you ladies good. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. That night that Jesus was to be betrayed, the Bible said that he took the bread and he blessed it. And he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And after they had supped, after the same manner, he took the cup. He said, drink ye all of this, for this is the New Testament in my blood. Yeah, Sunday we're going to install officers. I'm going to push that to the second Sunday in February. I'm pushing that to the second Sunday in February. So please, ma'am, please, sir, if you could spread the word to other leadership that may or may not be here today. The second Sunday in February. And then also, I want to I want to remind us we will be starting back up Bible study not this week but next week next Wednesday we will restart Bible study and I want to remind us Bible study is open okay yes we will continue to stream live we will continue to do that I think streaming live services is the norm from here on out anyway regardless of what happens. But at the same time, Bible study is open. You are welcome to come. And I know I have been getting a couple of folks to come and ask me about noon Bible study, if we're going to bring that back. And let me, I will let you know next Sunday. I will let you know next Sunday if we bring back. And if we don't bring it back immediately, hopefully I can give you a time frame. Okay, but I'm just trying to be mindful um, and just trying to be, you know, in order and, and cautious at the same time. Okay, um, Sister Patton, come on real quick. You got a mic? Um, Mr. LaRue, can you stand up, please? Mama, can you stand up, please? And Miss Houston, can you stand up, please? Amen. 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 You stand where you are. You ain't got to go nowhere. Uh, last Sunday, <laughs> I did uh, a dinner for 74 and up, and that was from my business, Wings with the Twist. That was not for from the church. That was from my business. Amen. 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 And, um, we don't do nothing for, well, I'm not going to say nothing, but we don't do too much for the elders and the um, I'm going to talk to my pastor about that. So, um, I don't have a lot to give y'all, but I got something to give y'all. Hey. Uh, I love y'all. Hey. Y'all good. Thank y'all. Amen. 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 I just want to talk to you guys to you for a for the wonderful, wonderful gesture on last week. I want to thank those youth and young adults who assisted her with serving. And, um, I know look, Matthew and Jemiah was making runs and delivering plates and dinners. Um, I just want to thank you all um, for your efforts in making our seniors feel special. Yes, and making them feel special. Because she is right. She is right. Give folk they flowers. Yes, Why they do it. Brought me back dinner. And Nick knows I love it. She won't let me get close to her, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna one day. Yeah. Thank you. God. Be quiet. Thank you. Well, we know that you are grateful. Thank you. But thank you again. Thank you again. Um, thank you. I know as we go into New Year's, we always have resolutions. I'm gonna stop doing this. I'm gonna start doing that. 
I wonder how often does our resolutions include yeah. loving God more? Yeah. 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 Or serving God more? Yeah. 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 Pleasing God more with my life? You know? And yeah. you might be surprised that by working on your relationship with the Lord, yes, how it will affect yes, the yes, other areas of your life yes, that you try to put all these resolutions around yes, and depending on yourself to fix it or to complete it or to make it happen. Some things, just leave it in the Lord's hands. To God be the glory. Welcome to 2022. I tell you what God has for you in this season, that it is for you. I pray He blesses your household. I pray He blesses your finances. I pray he blesses your health yeah. and that he blesses your children. Yeah. And don't always think that hard times are not blessings. You cannot have harvest without rain. You got to have those periods. It brings about fruitfulness. Yep. The rain is a blessing. Amen. Sometimes we need a double portion of rain. Yeah. Yeah. Quit blaming everything on the devil. People give them way too much credit. How many funerals have you been to this year? Oh, Where the pastor said God didn't have nothing to do with it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Ronnie well, just had two this past week. Because he told me. He said, yeah, you do it. Yeah. If God didn't have nothing to do with it, is he gone? <laughs> Who do you think the death ain't belonging to? <laughs> Who do you think belongs? You think he's God? You think he's Satan's death angel? No. The death angel belongs to God. Matter of fact, Satan belonged to God too. Well, he did. He's God's devil. Yeah. So do we that only makes this it doesn't make perfect sense. He's God's devil. So quit blaming everything on the devil. If you believe God, believe that He is working on you for your good. All hearts and minds are clear. Let us stand.
visiting us when we're in the wrong place, visiting us when we're doing the wrong things. Thank you, O oh God, for still leaving the 99 to come and seek out the one. Thank you, O oh God. And now, O oh God, remember us. Turn us and renew us. And Lord, through it all, we're going to be careful to give you all the glory that you so richly deserve. We love you now. And as we go and embark upon this new season, this new year, we are looking to the hills from which cometh all of our help. And we are not leaning to our own understanding. But Master, we are looking to you to see our way through. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the Father the throne of grace. Rest, rule, and abide in these thy people henceforth now and forevermore that every heart says Amen. God bless you. God keep you. May his countenance continue to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Go in the name of Christ. Also, I need you all to be praying for Brother Cam Jones. He having a procedure coming up on Tuesday. I believe that's this week, eh? Is it this week? I believe it's this week. But keep Cam in your prayers.